I, I can appeal to the youth who like Minecraft. Uh, block Tua, am I right, guy? Block Tua, build on that thing. Stop streaming? No, come on. I've never not had fun watching a Christopher Nolan movie. Interstellar is maybe my favorite movie of all time. You know what's crazy? I knew Saltburn wasn't good, but it's like funny how no one is talking about that fucking movie. <laughs> like it's had very little staying power culturally. So much of a flash in the pan for how big it was treated. Like you could not not hear about that movie. It was all you could hear about. I watched Long Legs. I thought it was good. I don't think it was great, but I thought it was, I thought it was good. I'd say worth the watch. It's kind of just artsy. Some of the shots I thought were really cool. The way it presented itself, I was like, this is cool. The lore and story, I was like, interesting. I can't watch an artsy film that's longer than 45 minutes. Some films are artsy and more, but I see what you're saying. If you're like only really appreciating the film you're watching based on the cinematography and not like anything else, I can understand why you'd check out. Long Legs had enough for me to be worth. I think Bone Tomahawk might be one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Would super, super recommend it if you like the genre. Hey, have you guys ever seen the movie The Prestige? Because if you haven't, I, I'm being so serious when I say this right now, by the way. If you haven't, please mute me for 30 seconds because you genuinely need to watch this movie unspoiled, okay? I'm giving you the warning. I'm giving you the warning. In the movie The Prestige, there's two magicians and they're trying to come up with a teleportation illusion. And the one comes up with it, okay? And it's a sick movie. I loved it. The whole time, you're like, how the fuck is he doing this teleportation illusion? And then the other guy literally invents teleportation with Nikola Tesla played by David Bowie, but that's a whole other aside. Turns out at the end of the movie that the first guy was doing the teleportation illusion by living with his twin in secret. So they lived one life. And what was crazy about this is when he had his fingers shot off and he lost his fingers, his other twin made the sacrifice of cutting off his own hands. But my question is like, like what happens if one of the twins had like a penis exploding accident? <laughs> the other twin would be like, all right, nah, dude, I think it's time we call it. <laughs> all right, maybe don't show your penis in the magic act. Right, I kind of forgot. I forgot that was part of- No, the, the audience would know. It's not the same guy! His bulge is different! He's a hack! Guys, I think I should go to med school. I'm kind of a gamer. Put me on the sticks, the surgical instruments. That is until someone from the surgical gallery starts chirping. They're like, dude, terrible job sectioning off the femoral artery there. And I'd be like, shut up. And then I get tilted. Also, I do accidentally leave my phone under my sheets. This I left a sock under my moment. sheets the other day. The so surface, I'm thinking I would probably a leave a sponge in someone. But that's what we got nurses for, Light right? They've got extra sets of eyes to make sure the patient's okay. Moon. Dude, I'm still laughing at Dan Giesling calling the DMV to try and locate his car on stream, man. Oh, imagine you're a worker at the DMV and someone tells you you're being broadcast. Like, what does that even mean, dude? They probably just think you're fucking insane. That like, they don't think you're a Twitch streamer. They think you're somebody who thinks that Wi-Fi being 5G is going to fucking kill you, bro. Zero pound. Please Customer enter. representative. Remain on Customer. The <laughs> this is after like fucking an hour of going back and forth. He got someone in the chat to find the like car through online database searches with the VIN number. He gets on the line and he just starts spamming zero and, you're and yelling customer representative, customer representative, and it gets him the through. Answer. Thank you for calling the Secretary of State. This is Angie speaking. How hey, can I help you? Hey Angie, just wanna let you know this call is also being broadcast. I know you're recording me. I just have a quick question. <laughs> Fucking thing I've ever seen in my I'm trying life. To... Hey, Angie, just want to let you know this call is also being broadcast. I know you're recording me. I just have a quick question for you. I'm trying to track down a um, car that oh. I once owned. I have the VIN. He talks to her forever. That it can never be put back on the road again. <laughs> he Under finds out it can never be put off. back on the road again, but he still off. gets the next number. Recorded. Do a um, broadcast, but and say, hey. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. How are you doing today? Hey, I just want to give help you. Yeah, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. This is being uh, recorded and uh, broadcast, but I'm trying to find <laughs> um, my car that was sent to a junkyard. Um, what's the best way to do that? I can't do it. Uh, you'd have to do a I record can't. request. Yeah, $15. To just the way you brush this over. Yeah, this is uh, being uh, recorded.
and uh, broadcast. But I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I can't. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was randomly watching this clip playing Hell Divers, and I heard him say this, and I laughed and I laughed and I laughed for 20 minutes straight. I the only reason I'm not dying right now is because I've been laughing at it like all the time off stream. Oh fuck, that's funny. <laughs> it's so good because like I think it's an absurd level of confidence. He's calling a government agency on stream and letting them know that they're being broadcast. How can you be so confident and so likable? Most people with that level of confidence would use it for bad things. They would go up to people at McDonald's and like harass them for a TikTok on the street interview. Whereas Dan Giesling uses it to win Big Brother season 10 and track down his 2005 Ford Taurus. He had a little call in sesh with someone who was looking for advice for a first date. And then that motherfucker went to Panda Express and ordered egg roll, egg roll and rice. They hit the double egg roll gambit? And then on the second day, he got a burger with no bun and like four patties. He got like a meat sandwich. He didn't even get the orange chicken. And the funny part was is that his date got like the most normal I order see. possible. <laughs> he seems like a nice kid actually. He was talking about going to university and he was making me relate to myself at that age being kind of clueless in like all the best ways. Oh, I finally get to experience new things in life and yada yada and be out on my own. For a second date, he went to a theme park that was a two hour drive away. My man. Honestly, I'm not even judging him. I'm more so just like, oh, this dude is hilarious, man. As a picky eater, I would simply get chicken tendies. Can I advise against the chicken tendy gambit? What if you were at a nice restaurant and they had chicken tenders, but they were only on the kids menu? Would you still order the chicken tendies? For sure, baby. You guys, you're not gonna make it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You probably have a wife, okay? But I would advise trying new things. I would say it's not a great look. If your date orders what chicken tendies at the nice restaurant, you're gonna bring it up. Or you're gonna raise your eyebrows and then not call them back. If that's the type of person that you are. But like, if you're true to yourself and you're gonna order the chicken tendies, I guess I can't judge you. But I would say, be dishonest. Pretend that you're not a picky eater. Try something new. Use that social pressure to force yourself to try something. Change your truth, whatever that means.